We're now going to hear Max Hood, I think, from Horsham. Uh, thanks for <coughs> uh, coming to the front. Um, so maybe you could give us your name and your your interest. Sure. Um, my name is Max Hood, and um, I'm a, a owner of the Horsham Taxi Service. Um, um, I, I'll thank you for the opportunity to speak to, to you guys t today and out, uh, outline our concerns of uh, the inquiry and, and uh, where, where I think uh, you possibly could, could do better in some of your recommendations. Um, okay. I'd, I'd like to speak uh, just on probably uh, four or five of the recommendations that, that I think will severely impact um, the service in, in our country town of Horsham. And um, have, please just keep in mind, I, 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 I can only talk on our country town of Horsham. I, I, I don't want to com comment on uh, the perceived problems that you see here in Melbourne. Uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, representing our town and our town only. We've got uh, plenty of experts on all sides who have got general and, views about sure. the taxi industries. Uh, just a little bit about our Horsham <laughs> taxi service. Uh, it, it is owned and operated by um, by myself and, and my wife. Um, um, we are different to uh, a lot of other services as we are wholly owned. Um, we own all the licences and therefore we run all the licences and, and run the taxi as our own business. Um, this in itself is very different in, in the way that we can operate. Um, we. We, are, we have nine taxis and a hire car. Five of those taxis are wheelchair accessible vehicles. And um, our town, our clients enjoy a very high service of, uh, uh, a very high standard of service. Um, our average pickup is, is anything from six to 10 minutes uh, from phone call. Uh, Horsham is a town of only about 15,000 people. Uh, the breadth of the town is only three to four kilometres. So um, we, we, we can um, indulge in a very, very high standard of service. Um, and this is where our problem with the inquiry is our service doesn't need fixing. Uh, we run a, a, an impeccable service, uh, a very high standard. Our, our clients are absolutely um, ecstatic with, with what we offer. And, and I would hate to see that service diminish under some of your recommendations. Um, we've been actively involved in, in the uh, process of the inquiry. We've uh, written letters, we've attended meetings, uh, we've sent a uh, submission to, to, the, to the final draft report. Um, and during, during this time, uh, Horsham Taxi Service, along with other countries' taxi services, have um, have w warned, I, I guess for a uh, want of a better word, to the inquiry not to try and fix the country problems uh, with, with one broad sweep of the brush. And uh, to me, you, you have done, you've tried to do that. Uh, your recommendations that are to fix problems perceived in the metropolitan will, will come over to our, us as country operators and uh, destabilise our services. Uh, and I'll comment on why just a little bit later. Um, the um, why I think you you are bringing an inferior service to to our Horsham taxi is uh, is one the deregulation uh, the recommend recommendation of deregulation. Um, this will now uh, will enable new entrants to the industry of Horsham, which is already well serviced. Um, an ind indication of what happens with our service is out of our nine taxis, during the week there could be two to three or four of those vehicles sitting in our yard idle at any time. The only time those nine taxis of ours are out and flat out are Thursdays, Fridays and Saturday nights. Um, to introduce more taxis into our area will we'll only leave more stagnant taxis. Um, and taxis not working at, are unviable taxis for uh, operators and the new owners. Um, it'll, it'll leave uh, the new entrants free to pick and choose 
the uh, times they want to work. So they, they will work the more lucrative shifts, obviously. They, they will work the Thursdays, Fridays and Saturday nights, which will impact on our drivers that are um, doing all the, the dull shifts or the graveyard shifts, if you like. Um, to me, it is unfair to allow new entrants to come in to rob, rob our drivers, uh, current drivers, of the more lucrative shifts and then, then go absent uh, when we have to offer, offer a service on a 24-7 basis. Um, if, these recommend, if, if this recommendation comes in, Horsham Taxi Service will cease to operate a 24-7 service, which will impact on our clients greatly because they're... Um, Monday, Sunday nights, Monday nights, Tuesday nights will be left unserviced, possibly after 12 a.m. Um, we, after 12 a.m. on these nights, we may only do 10 jobs till about six or seven in the morning. But some of those jobs are, are, are essential jobs. They're, they're people ringing up, they're woken up with a stomach cramp, they need to get to the hospital. Uh, if, this, if this leaves a tan unserviced, to um, ferry those people to the hospitals, and it is detrimental to the to our country clients. Um, it, it's hardly a better service to, to what you were you were chartered to implement if, if this were to happen of de deregulation. Um, as far as costs, um, because we are wholly owned by by our uh, by ourselves, we're, we're basically a one stop shop. We are a, a network service provider. We are a licensed depot. We are, we are everything. We are, we are a service. Um, and this, this itself, in itself incurs costs. Um, our dispatch system, for instance, costs us about $40,000 a year uh, to, to, to uh, dispatch our nine cars. This same system that we use is, is capable of doing about 100 cars, but we have to have that system to to run as efficient as we do. Uh, some of the costs I would like to compare um, with, with Melbourne prices uh, and, and um, allude you of, of um, where we, we were coming from. Um, coming into Melbourne last night, I noticed uh, your gas prices are posted at around 49.9 cents, 50 cents a litre. Our monthly bill last, last month was 72 cents. Um, this, this is 21, 22 cents a litre difference uh, of, of Melbourne to, to our country, town of Horsham. <coughs> um, just to equate this a little bit more into figures, um, we average a, a monthly use of about 13 to 14,000 litres a month. Um, that, that is about $2,700, $2,800 more than we would pay to our city counterparts here, which is about $35,000 a year extra just for gas prices that we pay. Um, you may argue that we get an extra five or six cents a kilometre in the country, but that does not near um, counter those extra prices. Um, other prices that, that um, Melbourne enjoy uh, to what we do in Melbourne are paint prices. Um, Melbourne's about $1,800 to get cars painted. We're about five to 6000 in Horsham. Um, mechanical, tyre, parts, um, we have come that we've had to source from Melbourne simply because they're too, too expensive in Horsham and um, the, the money that, that is in the industry at the moment just does not uh, quantify buying local, which um, is what country towns are all about, buying local. It keeps, it keeps our country towns going. Um, it gets back to our fares, uh, and, and, and this, is our inquiry, this inquiry is all about money. Um, we, we would argue strenuously against you, Mr Fells, about the, the last fare increase was awarded on a high gas price. Um, that was four years ago when gas was 50 cents a litre. Uh, today it is 72 cents in Horsham. I think the uh, formula is about 76, 77, something like that. The formula? The uh, formula, the Essential Services Commission used a formula to set the price and they used a LPG price of about 70, I can't quite remember, 76, 77 ish uh, cents a litre. Then, then I would argue formula. there's something wrong with the formula. 
Um, there, there, there's simply not enough money in, in the uh, in the taxi industry in, in our service. And, um, we, I mean, we don't need to tell you uh, uh, CPI since since uh, 2008. The fare increase has increased 12 to 13 uh, percent. Uh, just our running costs of wages, electricity, <coughs> the parts. Um, I think our superannuation is going up to 13 percent in, in, uh, with a jump already uh, since July 1. 3.6 cents a litre to carbon tax as uh, extra. Uh, our costs are just rising uh, and have risen uh, at, at a escalating rate, where our fare increase has just been stagnant for four years now. Um, and what's happening to your volume of business in Horsham? We are growing. Uh, our, our, our volume is growing. Uh, we, we, we are getting a busier service. Uh, Horsham is becoming not so much a, a country town, it's becoming a regional city. Um, we're still waiting for, um, for the, um, our last um, uh, statistics of, of the town's growth to come out, but uh, I, I think those statistics will show that Horsham has grown significantly in, in, those, in those years. And uh, we are getting a, a busier uh, service, there's no doubt. But um, um, us as owners, we, we just see that um, under today's costs and, and uh, fares, it is, um, it's almost worth not being in the industry. And I, I will allude to the fact that we will walk away from the industry if some of these recommendations uh, come into, come into uh, existence, and I'll explain that shortly. Um, we, uh, again, it, it, the, we vehemently oppose a 60-40 bailment um, to take to take that percentage out of our gross income and, and give it back to the drivers is, um, will put us into a negative earning capacity. Uh, simple as that, it, it's uh, negative earning. We don't have to tell you again that that, that will put us out of business. Um, we, we, we fully um, approve of um, wanting to uh, put more money in the driver's pocket. Uh, the drivers need more money, there's no doubt. Uh, however, it's got to be done not through a 60-40 bailment, but simply through a fare increase to uh, to bring us up uh, with our a parity with our uh, neighbouring states. And uh, I think someone spoke before about New South Wales; they're 30 per cent above us. Um, if I can just find my notes, um, there New South Wales about two dollars seventeen a kilometre. I think Queensland at 2.13, and I think South Australia around 2.13. Uh, where are we? Uh, $1.67 in country. 30% uh, behind. Uh, it, it, it's a huge, a huge la lag in, um, uh, in, in, in behind fares. I would argue also that um, New South Wales, South Australia and Queensland, people are happy to pay those, those fares. So um, I, I cannot understand why we are so apprehensive in, in awarding our drivers and uh, us as owners in our country uh, that well-earned uh, fare increase. Um, the other thing we uh, vehemently oppose is the, uh, uh, the uh, cut in licence values. Uh, we, we bought our licences, we've, we've mortgaged, we, we sold our last assets that we had to, to uh, borrow and, and uh, to get into the position we are. Uh, to, to cut those licence values to what we paid back is, to me, is simply un-Australian. It's, um, it's just not the way I thought we, would, we could do things here. Um, we also uh, oppose a set hourly rate. Um, yes, we, we need to get more money into our drivers' pockets, but again, uh, a fair increase will do this. Um, an 11 hour shift at $25 an hour is about $275 that we would have to pay a driver. Uh, some of these shifts on a Monday night, Sunday night, Tuesday night that, I, that we regard as our graveyard shifts, we will we, we only make $150. 
So that would put us in a negative earning capacity of $125. How about just putting, up, putting our fares back up, uh, letting our drivers earn that extra, in, in extra bailment, retain that 50-50 bailment? Uh, that will put money back into our drivers' pockets. And it'll keep us as a sustainable uh, business to, to uh, continue offering a service that our town's used to. I'd um, like to also, a few other of your recommendations, uh, which um, I, I, some I'm not phased about, uh, some, some you know, I'd argue mildly. Uh, one of them was the MPT, the multi-purpose taxi program to be used on public transport. I think that's a backward step. Um, in, in Horsham, um, um, heavily subsidised by our local bus runs, if they were able to use that card on a bus runs, uh, that, that would uh, put us at, uh, at a less, I'll, I'll rephrase that, 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 that will cut into our uh, um, clientele, uh, which our clientele is uh, a lot of multi-purpose taxi card users. Um, remembering the multi-purpose multi taxi card is given only to people that uh, cannot access buses and things like that. So to me, it's you've, uh, uh, you've uh, offering, offering them to use the card on public transport, but the card is only given to those who aren't allowed, who cannot get, get to public transport. So it's a, to me, it was an airy fairy type recommendation. Um, I haven't got a lot more to say other than um, we, we desperately need this fare increase. Uh, we, we've got to be brought up to parity with other states. Um, we, we, have to, we have to make our industry sustainable. Uh, and, and, and currently, under, under the, uh, some of your recommendations, I, I believe that our, um, our business will not be sustainable. OK, well, thanks. And thanks for coming down here. And uh, I found all the comments quite um, interesting and informative. But I suppose, like, five members are probably out there on a Saturday afternoon and this story was told me, I'd say, well, isn't this just a classic situation where someone's got a monopoly in a country town, they just want to keep it, and by the way, they'd like a fair increase. So well, what's your... That would be a typical public response to this. My, my response to that yeah. would be, yes, we have a monopoly. Um, we, um, we've borrowed and, and begged and, and uh, we haven't stole to get it, but we, we, we've, uh, we've earned that. But what, what my argument would be to you is, by bringing in deregulation, we will still retain that monopoly to a certain degree because we, we have got systems in place. What, what deregulation would do to us is it will destabilise uh, the current systems that, that are in Horsham at the moment. Our current drivers Will have, they will have opposition or competition on their more lucrative times where they actually get to earn the money to bring their average hourly rate up. Uh, deregulation will not work on that Monday, Tuesday, Sunday night. They will choose to stay in bed. However, under, under our monopoly, if you want to call that, uh, we, we demand that our drivers uh, cover 24-7 service. So yes, we have a monopoly, but a monopoly is there for a reason. It is to, to, to keep that deliverance of, of excellent service. And as I said, we, we, we will cease 24-7 service if, if deregulation takes place. Uh, why would we work from 12 a.m. to uh, 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning for, for five jobs for $120? It's, it's just not worth it. However, we can average that out by having that monopoly, by giving our regular drivers the ability to, to share the more lucrative shifts without competition. Competition on our Saturday night, which is our busiest night, there may be times where we, we can get 20 minutes behind for an hour, two hours. So Horsham is already well serviced by vehicles. It, um, to me, it does not need more vehicles in cutting into our drivers' income. Um, and again, your, your, your charter was for uh, uh, better service and, and safety and choice, but 
Um, to me, deregulation will not offer better service than Horsham. Um, comment, I mean, you asked Mr, I think it was Mr Gil Martin from Silver Top this morning, what is it about uh, regulation that, um, uh, what, or what is it about regulation in the taxi industry? And, um, and, and I think you mentioned it's the only industry that has regulation, but I, I think I could argue that there's many industries that are regulated, and the fishing industry is a classic example. Uh, it has regulations on, on numbers of, of, of catch. Why? It, it's sustainability. It's to sustain that industry. It's the commons problem. In, in fishing, it's um, uh, protecting uh, the number. There's a, there's a reason there, which everyone knows, fishing is a different industry because you have to sustain the... Uh, you can't overfish, uh, otherwise you'll run down the stock. And may I say, taxis are the same same deal. If you can oversupply taxis, mm -hmm. then it becomes understandable for the drivers and owners. Mm, not so sure of that. Um, I'm, I'm an owner and operator, I am. I'm, I'm sure of that. Yeah. It, it will destabilise our, our business in Horsham. Yep. Anyway, I'd just say fishing is always recognised as a special case in all the writings on it because of the common pool problem. But Other examples of, dere of regulation was the farming industry in, back in the early 80s uh, when, when quotas were brought in. It yep. was the same deal. So there's many examples of regulation. That's gone, hasn't it? Quotas? Well, which depends on what you're talking Milk, you mean? Milk? Dairy is, de or? is deregulated now? Yeah. Yes. There's similar complaints, you know, similar predictions and everything. We're still getting good milk, still getting supplied milk. Anyway, can, maybe can, we have more specific things to talk about. Can I just ask, your, your nine vehicles, uh, are they all operating 24-7? So you're covering 24/7 as a network. We cover 24/7 as a network. Uh, most times, uh, most night times, only two work. Two work. Two or three. On the Mondays and. Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays there might be three. Yeah. Thursdays four, Fridays four or five. It is only Saturday nights that we have our full nine vehicles out. Yeah. Um, and during the day of Wednesday, some Wednesday afternoons we get busy. Thursdays, Fridays, um, yep. nine are generally out. Yep. But uh, out of our nine vehicles, um, they are not working all the time. Yep. Um, I just wondered, because uh, you're in a position where the camera issue was pretty significant, wasn't it? Because your nine cabs, you go to ten and you're required to put yes. cameras. Uh, so do you have any uh, thoughts on that particular issue? Um, of course, there's a moratorium in play at the moment following our draft report. Yes, look, um, my, my comments there is it is restrictive. Um, mm. um, if, if we choose to stay in the industry, um, our, our business will grow. Uh, we will be wanting to buy another licence, which will bring us up to the magical figure of 10, where our vehicles will have to be fitted with, uh, with cameras and um, options for screens as well. Um, I'm not sure where we are with costs of per car for cameras now, but I think two and a half, three thousand dollars is an average figure, is it? Mm. Uh, yeah, that, that, that would be about a thirty thousand uh, dollar cost for us to make that extra step. Which, uh, to me, under today's earning capacity of our business, why would we, uh, why would we even consider another vehicle? Okay. Do you have any comment on the impact of some of the other recommendations we've made? You, you did refer, I think, to uh, the cost of painting vehicles, for example, and uh, some of those. How significant are they for your business? Uh, look, um, unlike a lot of other country service, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with our taxi yellow. I, I like our taxi yellow. Yeah. I, I think it's, uh, it's a distinct vehicle. Um, I see our vehicles running round on a Saturday night and you see a yellow vehicle and you know it's one of our vehicles running round. It, it, it is a distinct colour that people will automatically uh, rec recognise. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for taxi yellow, but again, we've, the industry's got to be sustainable and viable enough to, to uh, be able to, to afford to paint the cars yellow. Mm. Um, 
it, it's, it's all about viability as far as I'm concerned. And, and at today's rates and under some of these recommendations, it just makes our business unviable. And, and therefore, if, you know, eighteen hundred dollars or five, six thousand dollars in a country to, to paint yellow, it would be, uh, yeah, a huge burden. If the yellow went in the country area, what would be the price impact? You know, I mean, if it wasn't the requirement to do it yellow, mm -hmm. but some other paint. Well, you just buy white, would you? Yeah. Which and that would be more in the region of. No, like eighteen hundred or something. Well, you just buy a white white car and it, it's already painted, isn't it? Yeah. But um, I, I, I like taxi yellow. I, I'm, I'm happy to paint our taxi yellows, their uh, taxi colour yellow. But there's got to be money in the industry to warrant doing it. And the advertising proposal, what, what benefit would that potentially be for you? I'm not sure. Um, uh, I'm not sure how much money that would bring into our business. Uh, I'm not sure whether people would be pushing our door down to, to get their advertising on a taxi, one of our taxis. Um, I suspect that it, it's, it's a possibility of uh, extra income. Um, I, I think it's, it's a great uh, recommendation to allow us to do so if, if we can make it work. But uh, I'm just not too sure how our business uh, businesses in Horsham would, would embrace the fact that they could have a picture of their business running around in the back of their taxi. Um, 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 it, it's an unknown and it's something that could be up for trial to, to see how it works. Yeah. You haven't sort of explored that possibility? No, stage. we haven't explored it. We haven't been able to do it. Um, mm. You know, it, it's a case and wait and see what happens out of this inquiry. Mm. Um, and well, it's a case to see whether we stay in the business because, again, we, we will walk away from the business if if it cannot become more viable. Um, so you've emphasised a lot the fair issue um, in what, what you said. Um, so our recommendations um, uh, said a bit about fares which presumably uh, will have an impact on you. For example, the rebalancing of um, the fares, relatively higher short fares, would be, from what you've said in your submission, a significant benefit to you, I think, because your, your average trip was three kilometres or something? Something like that, and, yes. Uh, which is significantly less than the city. Mm. But then I think you were taking away from our night fares as well. So yeah. Possibly could that average out. But anyway, the balance should sort of work out your way, I would have thought. But anyway, over and above that, I suppose, is, is the recommendation we made that um, that the fare regulation entirely should be removed from uh, what we had um, in the draft report, um, the so sort of, um, uh, the zones three and four, if you like, that um, when a new licensing system came into play, uh, that at that point, uh, you know, uh, fares could be deregulated entirely. Uh, would, wouldn't that, in fact, meet your concerns? Why leave it up to us to set the fares when our uh, current body can do the same? Uh, like our um, essential services. They've had four years to, to raise fares and have neglected to do so. Um, OK, we can come in and, and raise the fares, but I, I just find that I'd rather have a body that does regulate it so it's, it can be... so it's, it's transparent. Uh, I think possibly transparency may be the key, and if people can say, well, OK, the ESC have recommended a fare rate of $2.15, then that, that is a fare rather than the body saying Horsham Taxi Service, have, oh, they're, they're charging $2.15. You know, why? Um, Melbourne's only $1.60. Uh, I, I think it's transparency that I would like to, so for our clients to, to see why, we are, why the fare is X amount, $2.17 or 15 But as you've argued yourself, that the, the costs are different. You know, the they, they are different, are yes. Different and, uh... they're, they're, they're very different, but uh, I'm saying that if we can get a 30% fare increase, that will put money back into our business. Mm. It'll put money back into our driver's pocket. Um, mm. look, I'm, I'm happy for you to recommend country, country gets more, but uh, we, we've got to retain our clients as well. So it, it's, it's no good putting a fare up to $2.50 to recoup costs and, and not have any clients. So it's a balancing act of, of um, 
of where, where our clients are happy to pay. That and seems to me that you're in the best position to make that judgment, eh? Someone remote in the city, uh, mm -hmm. setting price for you up there in Horsham. Uh, yes. I mean, some, some country operators said to us, look, don't, whatever you do, recommend a fare increase. <laughs> mm. um, I, I don't so know who they'd be. Where, where do you, you know, where, where do you go? <laughs> I, I, I just, that flabbergasted me if they said that to you, because I, I mean, we, we were that far behind our, our neighbouring mm. states and uh, every country operator that, uh, that I talked to, um, and I talked to a few being chairman of our, our local uh, western region of ETA, uh, they're, they're all battling. Mm. So I cannot imagine those saying that we mm. don't want a fair increase. Mm. Uh, mm. To me, it's, it's, it's just so important mm. to keep our, our business uh, running. Mm. Mm. All right, well, thank you very much for coming down. Thank you for the opportunity. Good.